Today, we're talking about office spaces. More specifically, is it better to rent or buy? If your journey has been anything close to ours, then you may have started your business in your living room or even your garage or heck, even your storage unit. What do you do when your home can no longer support your business needs? Ari, like most, went into the uncharted waters of finding office space for the first time. The first decision you must make is do you rent or do you buy? This is a growing pain that most entrepreneurs underestimate when looking for their first or next office space. This should be a super exciting process. However, don't lose sight of the long-term commitment for your next space. You have to balance the dream of the growth with the potential of the temporary backslides. Be confident that you will succeed, but have the reality that some factors are outside of your control and you need to plan with the pivot in mind. We're gonna go over each option in detail, exploring the pros and cons and giving tips to help you make the best choice for your business. Before we jump into the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all of our future videos. So let's dive in and first go over some tips that apply to both options. First and foremost, don't rush into this. This is a long-term commitment, either direction you take. You need to examine all angles when looking for an office space to ensure you don't overcommit. You need to look at both the monthly rent versus the overall cost of that space. We're gonna dive into that in a minute. You also wanna take into consideration the variable of what happens during the backslide and what if you lose revenue, can you still afford it whether it's rent or mortgage payment? It doesn't matter either way. Can you long-term commit to that office space? Similar to when you get a mortgage, you normally do the one-third factor of your mortgage payment should be no more than one-third of your income. When you're looking at it from a business side, you wanna make sure you don't give too much of a percentage of your profit margin to cover that mortgage or rent payment. Your other overhead has to be considered in that calculation. You also wanna consider the location factors. These might sound silly, but things such as traffic flow, parking, or even the lunch options for your staff. Again, long-term commitment, have to think down the road. All right, so let's look at the pros and cons of renting. So for the pros side, renting has way more flexibility. You're not tied down to any one location or building size for longer than the length of your lease. But also keep in mind that the length of your lease comes into play when you're negotiating. We'll talk about that later as well. Minimum office maintenance. Typically, the landlord covers almost 90, maybe even 100% of any maintenance required at your office. Renting also allows you to stretch your dollars sometimes. So maybe that upscale office you want, you can't afford to purchase, but you can afford to rent. So there is a pro in renting sometimes when it comes to that key location, depending on your business model. Now let's look at some cons of renting. You have zero equity in the property. So when you're paying that monthly payment, it truly is just being paid and there's no return. The next thing would be your rent is likely to increase over time. Typically, even in a lease, you're gonna have a built-in cost of living percentage every year. Be very careful to look for that when you're looking at those leases. You know, there's an old saying that you can't pick your boss. We well, also can't pick your landlord. So sometimes you may sign on that dotted line and find yourself with a difficult landlord who suddenly becomes unresponsive to anything you want to communicate. So unfortunately, you can't really find that out ahead of time, but it is a factor you should consider when you're communicating for those negotiations. Now, if you do decide to rent an office, let me give you some tips that we think will be super helpful. Like I said earlier, know how much you're committing to before you sign the lease. So you're gonna to wanna to calculate how much you'll spend over the entire lease, not just that monthly payment. So when you multiply the price per square foot by the amount of square feet you're renting and then how many years you lease, that kind of gives you a calculation of that overall commitment. So as an example, if it's $17 per square foot and it's a 3,000 square foot office, you multiply those numbers and you get $51,000 per year, you're gonna multiply that out by how many years you sign. So if you're doing two years, that's gonna be $102,000. That's a lot to commit to when you're just leasing an office because again, zero equity, zero return. 
but look at those pros, see if those outweigh the cons when it comes to making a decision that's best for your business. The one thing I mentioned earlier is negotiation. So like anything, you can negotiate and don't be afraid to do so. Just like your goal is to find the perfect office space, the landlord's goal is to find someone to rent that space. Otherwise, it is not making them any money. So keeping that in mind, don't be afraid to leverage the fact that they also need you as much as you need them. If the place needs updating, if it's not exactly what you want, factor that into the longer lease. So if you sign a longer lease, it's a higher commitment, landlord makes more money. So if you need to make updates or put in different structure inside the office to make the space yours, ask the landlord to put some of that money into it to fix up because it is their space overall. You also wanna ensure the lease specifies the landlord's maintenance responsibilities and your responsibilities. What things will they cover versus not cover? So you wanna look at those incidentals and things like that to make sure you know exactly what you're committing to before you sign on that lease. Ensure any additional terms you negotiate with the landlord are in the lease. I don't care how many emails you have or text messages or anything else. If those happen prior to you sign the lease and you don't get them in the lease, it doesn't matter. It is gonna be such an uphill battle for you to prove that term if it's not in the lease. Every lease has additional terms that can be added onto it. Make sure that you have everything covered in what you spoke about prior to signing the lease. Make sure you're aware of the details if you decide to terminate your lease. Every lease can be terminated. So if you find that your business growth is just so exponentially faster than you ever envisioned, which is amazing, happened here, then you wanna make sure you can get out of the lease without spending too much money. So also, if your lease is for a year, two years, three years, doesn't matter. When that time is coming close, you need to make sure you've marked on your calendar when you need to give notice of your intent to not renew your lease or negotiate for renewing your lease. Make sure you know those terms and mark that because if you miss the deadline, you may find yourself paying even more money to get out of it. If you're finding this video helpful so far, go ahead and give it a like. Now let's get into the pros and cons of buying. So on the pro side, you build equity in the property. Just like when you buy a home, if the property appreciates over time, it could be great for that investment. If the property you purchase is bigger in size than the team you currently have, you could rent out extra space to cover some of that cost until you grow and need the entire property. Also, if you outgrow the space entirely, you could turn it into an investment and become the landlord. Now, there are cons to buying. Now, that might be shocking, but there's always cons to every decision you make. So for buying, you are 100% responsible for maintaining that property. So when the AC goes out, when the hurricane blows off the roof, whatever that situation is, you now own that building, so you are responsible to cover that maintenance. You also have annual property taxes and insurance coverage to cover all of the things on that property and any liability you have as being the owner of the property. Just like with that home that you purchased, location, location, location. The location of the commercial property you buy is huge, not just for your employees or for planning, but also for the market value. So when you're purchasing, you have to make sure that you're thinking about selling later on, even though you may not think about it right now, because like everybody else, you are subject to the market value ups and downs. So let's give you some tips if you do decide to buy that office space. First and always foremost, work with a knowledgeable real estate agent who is familiar with the area you wanna buy in, not the area you're currently in, and specifically, experience in commercial real estate. It is two very different things than your residential side. Consult your attorney or financial advisor regarding the tax, financial, legal responsibility, anything else that comes with purchasing a commercial real estate. And make sure you have that conversation prior to committing to buying. You also wanna evaluate your current cash flow to ensure you have the revenue to support this commitment long-term not just today, not just next month. Always be thinking about the future when you're committing to something that could be as long as 30 years. 
Consider what financing method you'll use to purchase the property. Interest rates can be drastically higher for commercial real estate or require a much higher down payment. If you decide to buy, choosing the best financing option is one of the most crucial decisions you will have to make. As you look through traditional commercial funding options, you'll likely see terms and interest rates that will shock you. Trust me, you are not alone. But what many business owners don't know are all of the other options available, specifically with business and corporate credit. As you know, we make it our business to help you with these pain points. I've left the link to our free business credit masterclass in the description below. So be sure to check it out. Thank you for joining me on this video and we hope to see you next time.